Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Now a mushroom is a very classic turning project. You take a green piece of wood, put it on the lathe like this and turn this all in one shot. Then you let it dry, it cracks, but it looks good, it's really fun. But I wanted to take it up a notch today and do something with a little more style and finesse and different woods. So we're using dried, kiln dried wood today and you can see you can make all sorts of sizes and shapes and looks. And we're gonna start with these two right here. Get them off of here. And this is a little short squatty guy and you can see I have a tenon on each end and then that goes in there like so, fits good. And then this one is really unique because look at the shaft on it. It is different. It's all wonky, huh? That's because we're doing off-center turning with it. And then we're gonna make a cap that slides over it like so. So this is gonna be a fun project and you can use lots of different woods to do it. You can also see to display it, I grabbed just a cut off of a piece of wood that I made some bowls out of and drilled holes in here and started doing a display like that. You can put a little bit of that fake moss and stuff you can buy at the craft stores, dress it up a little bit, put a little village in there. Just go crazy with it if you want to. We're going to start with the little guy. So we're going to make the stubby stem first. Say that three times fast. <laughs> I'm changing it up a bit. This is poplar wood and what I've put on the lathe is zebra wood. I wanted to have a little more look to it. It's really kind of cool looking wood. This is about an inch and a half by an inch and a half by about three and a half inches long. And obviously this is going to sit in there like so. And this is going to be the top end and this is going to be the bottom end. It really doesn't matter in this one because it's just a very simple turning. So put that over there. Put his head with him. Get my eyes on. Nothing's hitting the lathe. I've got it mounted between centers. Going to turn this on and bring the speed up a bit. And I'm going to grab my roughing gouge and we're going to rough this out. We're going to try to do this in real time because it doesn't take very long. Just moving my weight from left to right. Pinching on the tool so it doesn't slide forward and it keeps the depth consistent. And I'm using the tool rest as a guide. And you can hear when you get into solid wood. No chattering. You can do that. A little bit of bumping. That means it's not quite rounded out, but not super important in this project. Okay. I'm going to grab Let's see, who do we want to start with? Let's go with my spindle gouge. This is a, whoop, that's a bowl gouge. <laughs> uh, there he is. I'm gonna go with a uh, shallow fluted, or deep fluted spindle gouge with a little sweat bab grind. And I'm gonna just uh, start taking the wood down. And like I said before, you can make any shape you want. Mushrooms come in all sizes, colors, shapes. You know, I've never seen any two look alike, even if they're the same type when I'm out walking around the woods looking for wood. Yes, I do that. Anyway, I am making a basic bead here, and then I'm scooping at the end. Just one nice flowing shape. So I come here like so. And I'm letting the tool ride. And then kind of come out like so. So that is the tip. We're going to take some of the end off here. And I love this because you don't have to make a perfect cylinder. You can really make, like I said, again, any shape you want, but you can also make it flow any way you want, if that makes sense. What I do want to try to do is make it look stumpy at the bottom, like it has some weight, like it came up out of the ground. And I've got that there the way I want it. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to get our parting tool. There it is. And I'm going to run over this way real quick. Follow me. We are going to drill 
well, follow me back over here. <laughs> there we go. We're going to be making uh, quarter inch tenons. So I'm going to just take my calipers with a quarter inch drill bit, widen that out, get that right there, tighten it up, and now I can make my tenon. So we'll come in here with the parting tool, and we're going to start parting this down a little bit. Now you can see I'm a little bit away from the uh, project with the tool rest. So if you start getting out this far, you might want to stop the lathe and move the tool rest a little closer. But this is the very light cut we're doing. And you know, actually before I make the tenon shape, uh, one quarter inch, there is one thing I want to do. And that is to sand it now while I have thicker tenons on there and put a finish on it because I'll be using some pressure. And if I go to the quarter inch tenon, it'll snap it if I put too much pressure on it. So we'll leave it a little thick and we'll start on, move over to the sanding process now. Now I've been messing around with a new sandpaper. Well, it's been out a little while. I'm just a little bit behind the time. It's called Abernet and I've talked about it in other shows. And the cool thing about it is it's mesh and you can see through it. And that helps the uh, sawdust and stuff go through it. Doesn't build up like old sandpaper used to. Uh, but as I've been experimenting with it, I've been coming up with different ways of using it. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of the different way. Um, when you hold just the abernet to the wood, since it is mesh and it is see-through, you feel a lot of heat. And it's also, it's got the loop part of a hook and loop on the back, so this is like soft and fuzzy, you can't get a good grip on it. Well, I was looking online and I, I got the abernet from Steve Worcester with turningwood.com and then I found a company called The Sanding Glove and they've been around for a while and they actually sell it's like neoprene, it's kind of rubbery with the hook part of the hook and loop. And you can get it either thick like this or you can get it in a thin sheet like so. And this has dramatically changed how I use this sandpaper and is really wonderful because I cut the sheets to six inches. This comes in a six inch wide uh, sheet and so then you can cut it to width to match your cuts. So that holds on there like so. Now you have something to hang on with your fingers. You can also sand really good, but yet, since it's hook and loop, you can just go like bam, 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 and knock all the dust out and keep moving on so you don't lose the advantages of having that mesh there either. So this is really cool. Um, you gotta try it out. And also, this group of sandpaper, I did all of those mushrooms over there and had to change this out just at the very end. I would have gone through probably about maybe 10 pieces of sandpaper in the normal way with normal sandpaper. So this stuff really lasts a long time. So I think it's a good value and I really like it. So got my mask and everything. So let's get to sanding. Now we sanded to 400 grit. And now you can see why zebra wood is so pretty. It has very distinct markings on it. I love that stuff. So we're gonna turn this on, pick the speed back up a little bit from the sanding. I've got my caliper set at one quarter inch. And we're gonna come in here, make our first tenon. And I'm making it wide. Uh, how would I put this? I'm going further away from the piece because if I make it, <clears throat> excuse me, if I make the tenon too shallow or too skinny, I always have a little more room to work with here. But I think I'm right on it there. So I'm just gonna match that up to what I just did. Okay, come over to this side. I'm gonna come out wide again. And I got a little turn off here. Make sure on your calipers that you use that you round over the tips. That way they don't catch on the wood. Whoops, now that happens. That's a perfect, I haven't been able to show this in a long time. What happened here, and turn this off, I didn't make a clearing cut and you can see how the wood swelled up right there and grabbed that tool tip. So even though that was only, what, a quarter inch deep, this wood must have had a little moisture in it, which caused that to happen. Now I'm a little bit out of round, so we're gonna have to readjust this on the lathe and fix this, but I can get her back to where I was. Let's see, there we go, that should be close enough to center. Whoa, I see what happened, yes. Okay, it's time for design modification class number one. This one is not gonna have a stem on it that is going to be a quarter inch. We're gonna leave that right there, which is probably about a half inch, and drill a hole according to that because I can't turn this right now because that cracked. 
So the next step is we'll just take this over to the bandsaw and nip the ends off, and then we're gonna start working on the top of the stubby toads, toadstool mushroom, mushroom. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Now we're ready to do the top, and it's a skinny little thing, isn't it? But it's really wide, which makes it look kind of cute. Yes, I used that word cute. Anyway, <laughs> we have this mounted on the lathe like this right now with this disc here. I've already cut a tenon on the end, so we're holding it in the chuck like so, and we're going to be doing the shape and dishing it out. You have to be really careful though because this is about three quarters of an inch thick. We don't want to go more than a quarter of an inch thick on the dishing part because we have to drill a quarter inch deep hole for the quarter inch tenon. It's a lot of quarters, isn't it? Anyway, if we go any deeper than that and then when we shape the top, we're going to have a mushroom with a drain pipe in the middle of it. So picking the speed up here, we've got our swept back spindle gouge right now. And we're coming in and we're just gonna start working at the center. And by the way, the wood I'm using is super, super cool wood. It's called lace wood. And you saw the pattern on it a minute ago. It is really pretty. I think it is called silky oak in some other circles, but don't quote me on that, please. But anyway, it is a beautiful looking wood when you put a finish on it. And all we're doing is making just a little curvy shape here, and I'm looking pretty good. Cleaning up the bottom, just taking a little bit of wood off at a time. Now I'm gonna come here, this is the edge where you'll get into trouble, so I'm using my fingers as a backstop. I've got the tool flat. I've got the bevel aiming, aiming straight that way, so we're gonna just make a little bitty cut, and it makes contact. I can roll the tool now, and it starts cutting. And put my pressure back down on the tool. There we go. So we've done a great shape here. And you don't have to be perfect underneath here because this is gonna be hidden. It's the bottom of the top of your mushroom. Now, what I wanna do is drill a hole and then sand, and then we're gonna do one more trick. Now I have my Jacobs chuck set up. I have the quarter inch drill bit in here. It's actually touching the wood right now. I know that the depth inside here that I cut goes about to where my thumb is now, and I can drill to about here. There's a little bit more of the wood in the tenon left, so I got a little room to spare. One thing about this drill bit, it's a brad point bit, so it's got a point on the end, so you gotta measure into your, factor that into your measurement too, so it's gonna go a little more than a quarter of an inch. And the way you can be accurate about this is, I love this on the uh, Robust American Beauty, it has an indexer on the uh, uh, tailstock here. It's basically a ruler inside of it, so when I move this back and forth, you can see the numbers change so I know when I go whatever depth I want to go. So I park this with the tip touching the wood right there, I turn this on, and then I'm just going to slowly advance it one quarter of an inch. There I go, so now I've got my depth right there, and we're done. We're ready to flip this around. Okay, as we said before, I hope you watch this all the way through before you follow my instructions because we don't turn it around just yet. We still have to make the recess that we're going to put in here so we can hold this when we turn the jaws around. Now, I have the piece of wood still mounted, right? And it isn't sanded yet. And the reason it isn't because we do that recess and you can see the chuck jaws right here. They, they fit right in there really nicely. So that's what a recess is all about. And Easy Wood makes this easy change chuck jaw system that is really cool and if I wasn't able to change my jaws that quickly this would be more of a pain for me and I really wouldn't enjoy it as much. <laughs> so I have the width that they start spreading out is two inches. So I have this on here my calipers are set at two inches. One of these is sharp, one is not. You only want to touch one to the wood. That would be the one closest to me. And you're going to see a mark up here. Okay that's not two inches yet. Now it's matching up, that's two inches. So I have this set perfectly level on center and I'm gonna take my skew on its side and come in here and make that recess. It doesn't have to be very deep, maybe an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna come a little bit wider just to make sure it's gonna fit on the jaws. And then I'm gonna turn the tool to make it flat so it sits flat on the jaws. Now, I'm gonna sand this and once it's sanded, then we're gonna turn it around.
Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.